This is going to be Ecclesiastes chapter 6. And we're going to see how the world is twisted in 2021. The crazies of our day think the way to happiness is through wealth, prosperity, through Republicans or Democrats, through making a better country, a better world. The average man does not get these two verses in 1 Timothy 6, 5, and 6. It says, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. They suppose that gain is godliness, but not that godliness with contentment is great gain. It's better to be godly and content than to live like the devil, have everything you want and be discontent. The average man today thinks gain is godliness. The preacher on the TV says that gain is godliness. He's a liar. The world out there that's not saved, they believe gain is godliness. They believe getting everything that you can is what will make you happy. But you can have everything in the world and then get bedridden tomorrow. You can be insanely rich and not be able to enjoy it. Ecclesiastes 6 and verse 1 says, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men. So what is this evil under the sun that Solomon is talking about? This refers to a man who has all the material items he could ever want, and yet he can't even use it. Because as it says in verse 2, A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity. It is an evil disease. You see the celebrities that are so depressed that they don't even have the power to enjoy their money. This is because there is something inside of every man that needs God. God is the person who allows a man to have riches. As it says in Matthew 5.45, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. God is the one who allows a man to have honor. In Daniel 2.21 it says, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. God is also the one who allows you to eat what he's given you. Uh, my friend went out to eat the other day, and he had a huge plate. He had all kinds of food, yet he couldn't taste it because he recently got the corona. What good was eating that huge, expensive plate if you couldn't even taste it? He might as well have ate celery. He couldn't taste or smell it and you see it's god that put the tongue in your mouth so that you could taste the food and it's god that can allow your taste buds to get zapped to where you can't taste it god gives you the food and gives you the power to eat it and enjoy it a rich man on his deathbed may have all kinds of stuff but what good is it if he can't even use it a man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. But the world is twisted, and the crazies of our day have the mindset of the less children, the better. They have the mindset of killing an unborn is a woman's rights. It's one thing to have an abortion and feel bad about it, but if you have one and defend it and call it women's rights, then you're a wicked woman and you're full of the devil, and if your man is okay with it, then he's full of the devil too. But the crazies think the less children, the better. But Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 6.3, If a man beget an hundred children and live many years, so that the days of his years be many, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. It, it's very possible for a man to have a hundred children. Solomon could have had a hundred children, easy. 
uh, because in 1 Kings 11, 3, it says, And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. So if Solomon had that many wives, it'd be easy for him to have 100 children. If he had just one child with every woman he had, he could have had a thousand kids. But if Solomon was able to have many children, which was considered a great thing, and he lived many years, if it isn't filled with good, what doeth it, he says? Children are the gift of God and are great, but gain isn't godliness. Maybe you really want a child, but you could have, and you can't have one, but if God lets you have a hundred Gain isn't godliness. There are all kinds of wicked people that have a lot of kids and they aren't godly. So they aren't happy. And he says also that we have, that he have no burial. To the Jews, a proper burial means everything. It was an awful thing not to get a burial. They wouldn't like cremation. Now, verse 3, If a man beget a hundred children and live many years so that the days of his years be many and his soul be not filled with good and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. A miscarriage would be better than him. For he cometh in vanity and departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun nor anything. This hath more rest than the other. The untimely birth a child that dies before he is even born is better off than a man who lives many days of suffering. Even if his days are full of riches and many things, if he's suffering, an untimely birth is better than him. The untimely birth departs in darkness and his name is covered in darkness. Nobody remembers him. He never saw the wicked stuff in the world. He never had to struggle. He has more rest than the man who lived a hundred years. And the crazies of this twisted world consider the unborn child that was killed in the Twin Towers to be a victim, which he was, but then they just consider an aborted baby to be nothing. They have no regard for unborn life. And they only pretend like they do in certain situations because they are a bunch of deceitful devils. How do you call an unborn child that was in the Twin Towers a victim and yet you're going to allow people to abort a baby before it's born? That makes no sense. The crazies of this world, this twisted world, only see life as life under the sun. They only see death as death under the sun. They don't think about life after death. Solomon is speaking of life under the sun, but he knows there is a heaven and a hell. The crazies think that there is no afterlife or that if, they, if there is, they'll come back as somebody else. In Ecclesiastes 6.6, 6, it says, Yea, though we live a thousand years, twice told, yet hath he seen no good. Do not all go to one place. Remember, Solomon is speaking in terms of life under the sun. The bo body of every man is going back to one place, the dust. But the soul is another thing. The soul is either going to heaven or hell. If you live a thousand years twice told and your life doesn't see any good, if you never get born again, then is it really any better than the guy who doesn't even get to get born? It would have been better off for you to have never been born, never have lived those thousand years if you're not going to get saved. Because as soon as those thousand years are over, you're going to hell. And what's a thousand years in light of eternity? What does it matter if you get as rich as the Greg Bezos guy or Elon Musk and then die and burn for eternity? In Ecclesiastes 6, 7, All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. The Elon Musk guy, the rich guy, he still gets hungry. He could buy out restaurant chains and grocery stores, and he still wouldn't get full. If all the food in the world was his, if he could buy it all, he still wouldn't get full. I go to work all day, and most of the money goes to feed myself and my family, and then we're hungry again the next day. If I work 20 years and we eat like kings for 20 years, then I start getting lazy like a lazy person and don't go to work. Then we all have to starve to death. Even though we all had already ate all that food for 20 years, if I get lazy 20 years from now, no matter how much I ate, I'm still going to get hungry again. And 
you're still <clears throat> going to be desiring food for your belly, even though you had it filled all those years. All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. It's something you got to continuously do every day. You got to go to work. You got to get food. You got to go to work. You got to get food every day until you die. That's why I don't understand people that think they go to work for a little while, get a little bit of money. As soon as they get the paycheck, they quit. It makes no sense because your appetite's not going to be filled. You're going to need that money again. And Jesus Christ is the only thing that will really fill you up. In John 6, 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Ecclesiastes 6, 8, For what hath the wise more than the fool? What hath the poor that knoweth to walk before the living? It doesn't matter who you are. When it comes to this temporal world, you're not any better are better off than anyone else. What you have is a piece of dust flying in the wind. Now the, the craziest thing you need to take from everybody else. They're either too lazy to work so they steal. Or they aren't lazy but are busy evil workers. And they get their money by fraud. They aren't satisfied with what they have. Ephesians 4.28 says, Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. They can't get their eyes full. Too much TikTok, too much watching TV and seeing what everyone else has. So now they want what everyone else has. They can't be content with what they have. Ecclesiastes 6, 9, Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wondering of the desire. It's better to have something that is yours so you can behold it with your eyes than to be constantly desiring something that isn't yours. Proverbs 18.22 says, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor with the Lord. It's a blessing to have a good wife. And the more attractive she is, the more other men will flirt with her and covet what's yours. And you'll be envied of your neighbor over her they'll envy you because of her and solomon also talks about how being envied of your neighbor because you have certain things this also is vanity exodus twenty seventeen says thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant nor his maidservant nor his ox nor his ass nor anything that is thy neighbor's I've had problems with other men coveting my wife since we've been married. And that's why one of my favorite verses is Genesis 20 and verse 3, where it says, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. He said, Thou art but a dead man. You need to think about that every time you flirt with another man's wife. And better is the sight of the eyes than the wondering of the desire. I'm better off than those men because the woman I'm beholding with my eyes is my wife. And not another man's wife that I'm desiring like they are. Ecclesiastes 6.10 says, That which hath been is named already, and it is known that, is, that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. That which hath been is named already. That which hath been is named already. That which hath been in man's history, all the, it, that's what's been in man's history all the way back to Adam until now. That which hath been. That which hath been is named already, and men are still using the same names. I got a cousin named Adam. You probably know somebody named Adam or Eve. The names we give aren't even original. And Adam named the animals way back then he was given god gave him the job of naming all the animals that which hath been is named already and it is known that it is man so it is known that it is vanity because in psalm 39 5 behold thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee verily every man in his best state is altogether vanity it is known that it is man. Verily, every man in his best state is altogether vanity. 
Ecclesiastes 16, that which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. And man can't really compete with anybody. We can't contend with God. We were made lower than the angels. The disciples had to be given power over unclean spirits. We had to be, they had to be given power over them, or they wouldn't have had it. We can't contend unless the ultimate contender lives in us. And 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. We can't contend with God. We can't contend with the angels. We can't contend with the devil or unclean spirits unless he who's mightier than the unclean spirits and the devil lives in in us. That's the only way. Ecclesiastes 6, 11. Seeing there be many things that increase vanity, what is man the better? The smarter a man gets in the wisdom of the world and the more knowledge he gets on how things work in the world, the more vain he becomes. Seeing there be many things that increase vanity, what is man the better? Daniel 12, 4 refers to the time of the end and says knowledge shall be increased. The more inventions man makes, the more vain he becomes. Because seeing there be many things that increase vanity, the more things that are made, the more vain he's going to get. All his focus begins to be on temporal things instead of eternal things. We mentioned the Elon Musk guy. He has many ideas and inventions, but they are all temporal things. The average patriotic American person has good ideas of how to make America a better country, but America is a temporary place. All these guys you see that even have common sense and somewhat good morals and they're conservative, guys like Ben Shapiro, they got good common sense and they're conservative, they got good ideas, a lot more morals than, you know, the left. But it's also vain because their mind is on how they want the world to be a better place. But Paul called this world a present evil world and also said evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. You're not going to make this world better. It's more likely to make you worse before you can make it better. So set your affection on things above. That's why you don't want to get too caught up in the political stuff because it will disappoint you. It's depressing. Uh, things aren't going to work out good for the Christian when it comes to the political stuff. Set, so set your affection on things above, and then Jesus Christ is going to come and set up the real, perfect, holy, physical kingdom. He's going to be the one to expose all the wicked people. That's the only way to escape the vanity. Set your affection on things above. Verse 12, For who knoweth what is good for men in this life? All the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? God knows what is good for you. You think that you know what's good for you. For who knoweth what is good for man in this life? Just God. Scientists and doctors think they know what's good for you, but they really don't. One minute they say wearing a mask won't help, and the next minute they want you to wear three at once. One day they say coffee's bad, the next day it's good, the next day it depends on which one you ask. Man doesn't know what's good for you, but God does. 1 Corinthians 8, 2 says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The more you think that you know, the less you probably know. Ecclesiastes six twelve. For who knoweth what is good for men in this life, all the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow, who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? Man spends his life as a shadow. If you're 30 years old, think about back when you were 15. To me personally, that doesn't seem that long ago when I was 15. That 15 years doesn't seem like 15 years ago even. If you're 30, you might live 15 years about three more times and then you're going to be 75. So think about living that past 15 years just three more times. That's all you're going to get most likely if you live as long as the average person. You're going to live that 15 years just three more times. And you've seen how fast that past 15 years went by. 
I'm very fascinated with time. It can work for you or against you depending on how you use it. Time is ticking and there's no pause button. Your grandparents are old and they talk about the old days, but what you're living right now will be the old days that you tell your grandkids about. And it's going to be over very fast. If you're 50 years old, you might have 20 years. You might have 20 more years. And think back about how fast that past 20 years went from 30 to 50. And then this 20 years is going to go even faster. And see, think, like I said, if you're 30, think back to that past 15 years. It seems like it went by fast. This next 15 years is going to go even faster. And then that next 15 years is going to go even faster than that. And then that next 15 years is going to go by even faster than that. You're spending your life as a shadow. Time speeds up because the older you get, the more you got going on. The busier you are, the faster time seems it's going. Psalm 90 and verse 9, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that's told. Your grandparents got all these tales to tell you. All these tales from their, their life that was, went by so fast and it's like a shadow. I talked to this couple that was 80-something years old. They said they have no idea where all the time went. And you think, well, they're just saying that. But that's how they really feel. That's how you really feel when you get 80. You need to realize that now if you're young. When you're 80, you're really going to feel like it was just it just all passed like a shadow. You need to really take people's older people's advice. In Ecclesiastes 6.12 it says, For who knoweth what is good for man in this life? All the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? Miss Cleo can't tell you. Not those psychics on TV. As a kid, I would prank call psychics, and they would say, you know, it would say on the commercial, you must be 18 or older to call. So when they would answer, I would say, if you're a psychic, then how did you know that I wasn't 18? How did you not know I wasn't 18? They said, well, have a nice life, kid, and hung up. You see, the psychics are phonies. If they really are who they said they was, surely they would have known I wasn't even 18 years old. They're phonies. And what they get right, the devil gives to them. They can't tell you anything. Who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? That person that can tell you what shall be after you is a born-again believer who gets saved and tells you what the Bible says. Because God put the future in the Bible. Only when I use the Bible can I tell you your future. God knows the end from the beginning and not man. The Old Testament prophets only saw the future because God showed it to them. But this has been Ecclesiastes chapter 6, and hopefully you've listened to it, and hopefully you're not deceived by the crazies of this world. It's like the crazies uh, brainwash people and make them crazy too. And what you have is like, it's almost like an alien invasion or something. You got all these people around, and it's like, you're thinking, are they human? Obviously, they are human. I'm not being f for real, but it's like, the way that they think, the way that they live their lives outside of the Bible, they call abortion women's rights. They think it's a right to kill another person, an innocent baby. They think wearing a mask is the greatest thing in the world that you can do. They wear a mask even though they smoke and drink and do all this other bad stuff for their body and they're going to wear a mask. That, that doesn't make any sense. They and then they want to be snitches about it. If you don't have a mask on, they want to ridicule you, make fun of you, all these things like that. They're all about this vaccine stuff. If you don't get the vaccine, you're crazy. They don't want to be around you. Uh, they think that <clears throat> being a homosexual and being coming out with it is being who you should be and that's the real you and that's showing true love and you shouldn't fight love and say that they shouldn't be together or you shouldn't say that an eight-year-old boy should stay a boy and not become a woman you see the world just getting crazier and crazier the more people get away from the bible 
the crazier they become. And if you listen to these people and forsake your Bible, you're going to start thinking like they're thinking. You're going to get more crazy. If you listen to the music of this world, what it represents, that's going to make you crazy and twisted. And you're going to, it's going to make you wicked in your mind and you're going to th start thinking backwards from the way God wants you to think. You have to be separate from the world. You have to get in the Bible, find out what He says, get the wisdom from the Bible because that's the only thing that's going to keep you sane in this crazy world that we're living in in 2021. It's like we're living in some type of twilight zone or something. When you listen to the people that are in charge, when you listen to the people that are celebrities and that have all the fame and that are influential, those people are literally crazy. And yet at the same time, they're making the other pe the the less famous crazy people out there think that me and you are crazy. They think it's crazy for us to be against abortion. They think it's crazy that we think it's strange for a man to dress up like a woman. They think that we're crazy for thinking this stuff. But we're just using common sense. I mean, people that weren't even Christians years ago that, uh, would think we're more sane than the lost people are today because the the left has gone so far left that it's just... It's like something from a movie. It's like something from your worst nightmare. And it only gets worse from here because evil men seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But this has been Ecclesiastes chapter 6 about the world being twisted in 2021.